cow. This is Cow Cat, the Cow Cat Sir, and this is uh, a review of a uh, movie that Mark's Cards and I saw last night called Inside Out. It stars many of the SNL alums from the last couple of years, uh, last 10 years or so, uh, and, and they play characters in a movie where Mark's Cards actually liked it. Instead of like usually when they put SNL people in a movie, they don't. The story is the little voices in the head of uh, head of Riley Anderson, who has gone from Minnesota to San Francisco, which is not an on-location story. You might think it is because uh, Calcat, one of uh, my mother is from Minnesota, my father's from Chicago, and moved out here in the '60s before I was ever born. So, but no, no, it's not based on on-location. It's not based on my sisters or any of those, but that would be interesting. Um, no. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it's not about mental illness or schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Well, some sort of parts of it seem like it, uh, in that the characters, with the voices in her head, control the control tower. She's 11 in the story. And they, and they, they control this world inside her head. And basically there's the, the uh, quintessential id and super ego characters. Here we have anger, fear, disgust, sadness, and joy. And joy is the main character. Joy and sadness have to go on an adventure because the others have accidentally caused them to flop, fall into the, uh, the machine, the machinery. They get sucked into the other part of the memory core and they have to go retrieve the memories. Along the way, meet up with her imaginary friend who is bizarre. It's like an elephant, dolphin, cat, and I think I remember other things. Uh, yeah, so uh, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of colorful imagery and things. It's, it's very very playful with being an original concept, similar similar in many ways to Up, which uh, which was being put together in the uh, 2000s time period, polished up by some interns. That were at San Jose State uh, with the Pixar people. I was there, but I'm not from Pixar. They happened to be there, and they were there. And I talked to the people that were finishing up, up back in the day. Yeah. And then the number, and there was a magician one and something else that were not Toy Story two just yet. They were. I don't know. Uh, I think they'd already done that one. Yeah. So that was interesting. So those names keep coming up in Pixar movies I keep looking for. Yeah. <laughs> there they are. And then this one, yep, two of them are in there, the cast. <laughs> well, yeah, cool. Uh, they were in Toy Story 3 as well. And Polly. And yeah, so, or other ones. Uh, but yeah, uh, too bad I don't any longer have direct connections to them because scripts and things that he could help out on. It doesn't, it doesn't animate. I animate a little bit. I tend to get overzealous with it. But yes, back to the story. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, that's uh, that's our Pixar story. There you go. Uh, the uh, Hawaiian Island one. Even. I don't know what's in there. The lava. Uh, that's not what he was really doing in Hawaii. But uh, no, he wasn't doing Pixar. Well, you're joking about that. But yeah, there's a little short in there that looks like something he would totally have done. <laughs> but he didn't. No. Okay. Yes, um, Inside Out is is about this uh, girl in San Francisco who is lonely and downtrodden because she's moved to a new city, and and her voices in her head. Uh, there, well, I guess everybody has them. They imply that everyone has them, so that there's no like uh, disparity. I guess. So, uh, but but she does, and. Um, <laughs> And and she doesn't like school, and she doesn't like friend. Her friend like dumps her for somebody else or something, and gets kind of uh, kind of dark and sad and stuff. And the um, but it doesn't get as sad as Up did in the beginning. Up was a mess, but, uh, an emotional mess. It was great, but it was an emotional mess. It's a roller coaster ride. This was not. This was more of a fun emotional roller coaster ride. That wasn't like you weren't like weeping in it or anything. That was just good. Um, <laughs> it wasn't like Wally, where like for 50 minutes you're like, "Oi, what the heck?" <laughs> okay, 
Um, but um, it seemed like it. Maybe it wasn't 50. I don't know. 30. It was like, oh well, yeah, hurry up a message. Yeah, um, hurry up with it. And the, uh, I liked Wally. He just had some odd stuff in it. But this one being. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, uh, basically that's what happens. So we have the character Joy and Sadness who gets sucked into the machinery and have to go to the other world. And when they get inside the brain core, all this other weird stuff happens. Riley wants to run away, and there's this big... But the actual mm, series of events happens over probably a week, maybe less. So that's kind of an interesting idea. It's like, it's not very long. It's just a couple of days. And, and uh, that's an interesting idea, uh, doing that. Hmm. Well, yeah, I, I liked it. Uh, Mark Cards thinks it's the best Pixar movie he's ever seen. I, I still like uh, Toy Story a little better. Um, yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, it, it was good. It had it had a lot of elements that were that were good and original and stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, hmm. well, I yeah, it's a great Pixar movie. But it uh, is a quiet taste. Yes. Yeah. Um, hmm. So. So, yeah, so go out and see it in theaters, in 2D or 3D. <laughs> and, well, it's still in theaters. I don't want to give away too much of it, because it literally just came out last night. And if I put that online, say everything that happens, I'll tell you the whole plot of how things happen. It'd be like, ah, oh, he's giving spoilers. So I really can't go into too much of the movie, because it would give too much away. The, I, uh, the whole premise there see that and the cartoon thing and on on the subject of whether the characters are bipolar or borderline personality or schizophrenic they're not supposed to be it's and it's interesting that you look at that whole concept of identity and the id the ego the super ego all those psychological terms for stuff and people talk to themselves a lot you know, make a live blog <laughs> and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, the, those people aren't necessarily nuts. Some of them are, but not necessarily. In, in a lot of cases, they, they just want their thoughts to be allowed so that they can understand them, which is the case with me oftentimes. <laughs> it's like, I, I, I just need to hear what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, which doesn't help too much, but no, it's not not nuts. Um, it's just, uh, it's just, and often that is the case with uh, people who are autistic. They will often do that, and 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 people who are very drama oriented, or acting oriented. Also, like most of most of you know, in order to be a really good actor, I'm not that great. An actor. I'm more of a cam, bam. But in order to be a good actor, you have to be able to put yourself in the other person's shoes and pretend to be that other person. It's not so much a matter of the, uh, you know, the uh, imaginary friends idea as so much as it is, you know, the concept of being bizarre and twisted. The, uh, <laughs> it's not so much that as just having an active imagination. That's not a crime, to have an active imagination. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it just makes people look, look at strange, you know, <laughs> if you're too loud, there you go. So the movie does portray that well. Uh, I'm not sure whether the human brain is wired like that. And there's like robots and there are little little figurines, little pixies in there. But uh, that would be interesting. But uh, I always pictured it more or less a no, not self-aware kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. So it's good. But yeah, it's good. I can't give too much away though. So I haven't there, really. I've just said that it's not about borderline personality. Uh, yeah, it's not really about... Although she is kind of bipolar. In it, a little bit. Because, yeah, there's... The two extremes are joy and sadness. That would be literally bipolar. <laughs> the other ones are just sort of there. But joy and sadness... <laughs> the two opposites. That would definitely be... Yeah, she's manic-depressive.
Great. So in the sequel, she'll probably be like, like on Prozac or something. Yeah. Ritalin. And some other drugs. Um, no, they won't do that. Mm. <laughs> but it's not, uh, yeah, the scene isn't, like, like there's this whole lava, the short. It's about this island and it's singing and spewing out lava. And then there's this other island that's a female island that comes out with a big long tower and it's... It's just really odd. It's just so bizarre that it's like, okay, that's interesting and cute. But yes, cute. And and it wasn't creepy that uh, that anger is played by uh, quite a bit of an older uh, character from the uh, comedy routines. And uh, the voices in the head and stuff. There was a funny scene. Look for the dog scene and the cat scene near the end of the movie. In which they show what it's like inside a dog's brain. And he has the little voices in his head and the dog brain. And the dogs are all obedient and they're sitting there going, hey, Should we press the button? Should we press the button? And then they show the cat's brain. And we got like cat back here. And they got like the, uh, this is the cow cat scene that's in the movie. So you want to check that out. Uh, the, the, uh, the land and the cow cat scene. And so, so the so the other the the dog scene is uh, the dogs are all obedient, and, you know they're kind of say, doing their thing, you know, obediently. The cats are everywhere. They come, all the different colored cats are like walking around, it's crazy. They're arguing. They're fighting in the corner. There's two or more here. There's one just standing there looking all emo. There's emos in it too. Yes. There's a little bit of of Jim Tacon. <laughs> Jim Tacon, as we later discovered. Well, He's not, he wasn't emo, he was a rocker. Yeah, so that's a little different. Same, same idea, like, metal is, is fierce and dark. Ah. He had this sort of, like, he had this sort of, like, range of that. You know, it's the same idea, like, everything sucks unless it's metal. Oh, destruction. Oh. So that's a little bit of them, but it's more like punk rock. So, metal and punk rock. <laughs> that's a little different. But yeah, there were emos and punk rockers. But the cats, they were everywhere. And there's this purple one, this imaginary friend cat. He's walking on the console, like, screwing it all up. <laughs> and Mark's cards, because I said, I thought he did the lava part. Because he went away. He didn't. But I, I th and he turned to me and said, did you do the cat part? So. <laughs> what do you think? No, I didn't either. He's like, ah, I didn't think so. But no. No, the new Peanuts movie, that's us. No, it's not. So, the movie that we saw last night, Mark's Cards and I saw last night, there is no blog review yet of this, but there will be, of Pixar's latest movie, Inside Out. This is brand new, practically live review for you. Okay, yes. Um, the story centers around Riley Anderson, a cartoon character and her family who get transported from Minnesota to San Francisco. You might think, yes, again, they have copied on location, but no, they haven't. <laughs> um, no, I did not move from Minnesota to San Francisco. Although my parents did. Um, yeah, so, anyway, I am not Riley, but that would be funny. Uh, yeah, I, I, the idea that, uh, the, 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 the idea of, like, the voices in your head talking kind of thing, uh, without it being some kind of a mental problem, is, is an interesting idea, uh, and doing, um, you know, yeah, the, the, the cartoon is not actually about, like, multiple personality disorder or borderline schizophrenia, although they kind of imply that in the trailer, uh, and, and, and yeah, that's not what's going on.